Hi everyone, this is Phil from statisticsmentor.com. We're looking here at an example of logistic regression. Now logistic regression is different to standard regression in that the dependent variable is binary. So it takes one of two values, the event happens or it doesn't happen. And it's coded as 1 and 0. 1 in the case that an event happens, 0 if it doesn't happen. Here we have an example of um, coal miners being exposed to coal dust and we record whether or not miners get a certain disease. Now the way we read this is that the number of years of exposure to coal dust 5.8 years. How many of such miners exposed to that? 98. Of those 98, how many got the the uh, d disease, none. If we look at down here, 51.5 years of exposure to coal dust, how many were exposed to that? 11 miners. Of those 11 miners, how many got the disease? 5. Okay. So that's what the data looks like. And we're asked to fit a logistic regression. Now the dependent variable, we have to ascertain what that is first. Dependent variable is that a miner got the disease. Okay, what is the explanatory variable? It's or the covariate, it's years of exposure. So we're asked here fitting regression logistic regression see the years of exposure, how does that uh, affect the chances of getting the disease? We're asked to fit the log it logistic regression and look at the estimates, intercept and the slope, and the standard errors, how well does the model fit, plot the observed proportions of cases and the fits from the model. Right, look open up the data set, we see that there are headers up here and so we use header true. Okay, I use the file choose Okay, there it is. Next we attach it. Okay, now to run the logistic command we need to create the dv first, the dependent variable. I call it cw. And what it has is consists of two columns. One column is the number of events that happen and the other column is the number of events that does not happen. So it's got to be in that form. T type cw now, you can see first column here, events that happen. So first case, n no people got the disease. I mean, and, sorry, no people, number of people who got the disease, zero. How many people did not get the disease, 98. Second, corresponding to the other year, 15, 15 years, number of people got the disease, one. Number of people who did not get the disease, 53. So what's the total number of miners exposed to 15 years? of that dust, 53 plus 1, 54, okay, and so on. So this is going to be the DV, and it's arranged like this, so one column counts the number of cases, the column counts the number did not get the, to get the uh, disease. To fit the regression, we use the GLM, or GLM command, the Generalized Linear Model command, so that's the DV that I just created, and we're regressing that on years. And we're telling it that the family it's binomial. The DV is binomial. Um, so this is always going to be the case for if you're running a binary logistic, GLM, DV, and the uh, IV is like usual regression, comma, family equals binomial. That will always be set to family equals binomial for binary logistic. Okay, to look at the output, we type the summary and the object, the name of the object of the, of the regression. Coefficients, estimate uh, for intercept and the slope. Let's see what else we've got. Got the usual, looks like T statistics, except for look, it's not T, it's called Z. But it does the same thing, you're testing the null that the coefficient is zero. 
and instead of having r squares we've got these kind of statistics null deviance residual deviance instead okay the aic the deviance is like the residual sum of squares of normal regression now the null deviance is the model where which only contains an intercept so there's no years in other words it's the most basic model of all so here null deviance is obtained by regressing uh, the dv just on the intercept so that's probably the worst model you can get the residual deviance is comparing our the model deviance from here to one you get from the null model now the test here is a bit like Imagine it's a bit like the F test for normal regression. The null hypothesis is that this model, the model we have, is adequate relative to the null model. The test statistic, which is a chi square test, takes the value 6.05 and the 6 degree of freedom. And so, one tailed tester so would just need to look up the critical value. Right. Now, so one tailed test, we can, to look up the critical value, type Q chi SQ open bracket 0 0.95 so this is going to be the area to the left of the critical point and 6 degree of freedom so critical value is 12.6 since 6 is less than 12.6 we do not reject the null that the model is adequate relative to the null model in other words it's uh, better than the null model Next, interpret the. Let's look at the coefficient on the um, covariate years. 0 0.09, but is it significant? So, z value here is like the t statistic. Null hypothesis is that the coefficient is 0. That's the test statistic. And that's the critical value, which is highly significant. So, we reject the null, reject the null that the coefficient is 0. Now, how do we interpret this coefficient on years? Well, we could say that we could do it the same as for standard regression. So we could say that if the years of exposure to coal dust goes up by one, the model predicts that the log of the odds increases by 0 0.09. Now, the odds is just the probability of the event happening divided by a probability that it does not happen. Now, such uh, interpretation is not too meaningful because it's you know what does it mean to say log odds? So we can transfer transform this to just talk about odds if we take the exponential of the coefficient. This is standard. So now what we can say is that the odds increases by a factor of one point zero. Nine seven nine six seven blah blah. If years of exposure of coal dust goes up by one year, another way of saying it is that if the number of years of exposure goes up by one, then the odds of getting the disease increases by nine point eight percent. For those of you a bit rusty about converting this into percentage, one way to do this is to type in the value, get hold of the value, subtract 1, multiply by 100. Uh, that's now percent, 9 point, about 8 percent increase in the odds. In terms of probability, it just means that the chance of getting the disease increases with years of exposure. As an aside, you can get the predicted probability given the years from this model. That requires a formula which you can look up in a, in a, in a textbook. Now to get a plot of this regression, so we've got plot years which is the it goes on the x-axis, the horizontal axis which is the, the covariate, for the fitted values, so this is the command fitted values of the regression these will be the proportion of probabilities. Okay, so here we are. Years along here, the fitted values which correspond to the fitted probabilities, which are up to maximum of half. So you can see that 
is increasing like an exponential increase here so if you have exposed to less than 10 years you've got about a small chance but the more years of exposure the higher the chance of getting this disease until 50 years peaks about 0.5 now how does that compare to the observed value so to get that we put into the pot plot the points so use the points command years which is the x-axis cases divided by minus so that's observed proportions and we want red circles and we get this so the red circles here are the actual observed values and the black circles are fitted values so you can see there it's quite a good fit our model kind of captures this curve so that's it to summarize the, the binary logistic model is when the dv is not no longer continuous but takes the value one or zero i.e. it's an indicator variable or dummy variable we've shown you how to fit the binary logistic and we looked at the interpretation of the uh, slope coefficient and looked at the statistics z value and we've also looked at the null deviance and the residual deviance extension to this to multiple covariates is as usual so we would use CW tilde years plus and then the other lists of covariates if you have them. Okay, I hope this has been useful.